Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. This is Chris Gamble, and we are going to be in this video looking at the symbol editor and going just through a high level overview of what's in it and taking a quick look at a symbol before we actually dive down into how to edit and make particular symbols in other videos. All right, so we start off as we always do. We start with the launcher and we open up the schematic program. That is actually the first thing we have to note is that the only way to get to the symbol editor is through the schematic program, which is a little wonky at first because if you're just looking in the launcher, you won't see it. All right, so we have an empty project. This is just an empty schematic here. So we're going to go into the library uh, editor. Sorry. So there's a browser and an editor. We're going to go into the editor. And from here, you see the same symbol. We actually can access the browser from here. So let's take a quick look at that to start with. This is the library browser, and so this actually allows you to just kind of go through and get a high-level view of all the different symbols. So these are the symbols themselves. These are what you'd actually end up dropping into your schematic, which has gone over in other videos. But if you're just kind of trying to find a part, you really can't see these previews just when you're picking out a part from a list to drop it into your schematic. So you want to, if you want to be able to see you know, which part it might actually be, you'd go through the symbol the library browser rather and see you know what's available if you have the right parts in there and if not then you can come into the editor and start making your own components to, to later drop into your schematic and again as we talked about uh, in previous videos these are just the symbols uh, there's an entirely different editor just to make your footprints and then there's a step in in the entire design flow where you actually assign your symbol as shown here so this symbol will then get associated with a similar dip 6 footprint in that CV PCB software so if you're if you're right now if you're trying to realize what what the heck is the difference so this is the symbol this is what's going to show up in the schematic diagram well and then we'll later associate it with a footprint and drop that into the layout just so that's clear so you can see all of the different uh, libraries here these said these are the libraries on the left and then contained within the library is the actual uh, symbols themselves so if you want to think about a library as like a folder that's a great way to really kind of imagine you know the structure basically a, a single library is a folder containing symbols now what happens if you don't have the proper symbols here um, so you want to have a library you know it exists on your hard drive but you're not seeing it here you're not seeing you know maybe it's a, a FPGA specific library right this obviously goes by uh, vendor so it has some Xilinx stuff here but to say you have a, a library you know exists as FPGA and you see between D and I there's there are no symbols so what do you do then okay so the first thing we'll look at here is the actual library preferences tab and what this does is this actually shows all of the same libraries that you just saw in the library browser. However, uh, you can also add your own. So down here is the uh, user-defined search path. So this is actually just telling it where to look. So if you open this up, we can actually go in and, and you know pick, pick a location where to look. So this could be an entire hard drive or entire folder uh, with, with subfolders and everything. Usually I like to actually pick a very specific folder. In this case, it's a, a KiCad uh, Circuit Hub plugin. But once you're in there, then then you can go into the add, and you can see that there actually is a library that exists in that folder that I shared, and you can actually choose that. So having those two things together, then uh, you can see that I, the Circuit Hub library here is what I included. You have Circuit Hub here. That those were both uh, added libraries. These, those were sought out by me. So when we go back into the library browser, we can see that CircuitHub in, indeed exists, and here's one part that I had pulled in. So that's just a very quick uh, overview of how the libraries work and how you can pull in your others. That, that's, that gets a little tricky sometimes, so be careful with that, but um, it's, good to, it's good to know how to do that kind of thing. Okay, so now we know the concept of libraries. We know the concept of a symbol. Um, another thing to note in the library editor is that you actually have to pick a specific library to pull from. 
So again, if you think of libraries as like a folder that contains a bunch of different symbols, in this case, we're going to choose maybe the device library, right? This is the generic, uh, this has all the resistors, capacitors, very generic components in there. So we'll select this library. This is as our working library. Okay, and that really, it doesn't really show anything there. Again, this is kind of a, a little bit of a wonky KiCad flow, but you're not seeing any uh, indication of what library you're in. However, if you then, you can either go create a new component or you can load a component from the library, which we're going to do here. So you see uh, a very familiar format. You know, if, if you have a history of different components, we're going to go to list all. And then now you see these are all of the symbols that exist within the device library. So we're going to just pick a quartz crystal. And you see this is a generic quartz symbol uh, that you could drop into any schematic. All right, let's go through the rest of these buttons up top here. Uh, now that we actually have one loaded, these are actually not blanked out anymore. So going across again, uh, we can take this symbol and create another one from it. So if we wanted to create a derivative component, maybe a quartz ZCMS5 instead of 4, we can just quickly save an entirely different component. Uh, we can also update the component. This will actually update the library. So at first, it's, it's not actually committed to memory. You can make changes on it, um, but it's not committed to the, to the actual memory until you uh, hit the update button. Then import and export, pretty standard. Uh, saving to an entirely new library. This is good if you have a component that you maybe you want to create just a crystal library because you're going to have a wide range of crystals in your design. Then you can go and take this and create an entirely new, uh, new library. Undo, redo, pretty common there. Uh, this is the component properties. And there's a couple different tabs up here, uh, which we'll go through in further detail in other videos. Uh, this is the text and fields properties. Uh, so if you want to have, uh, in prior videos, we talked about maybe having a different standard uh, property or field here. So maybe you have a color field or whatever you'd like. Um, you can actually drop that in here so that every time you drop this quartz into your schematic, you'll actually be able to assign a value to maybe the color. So you have a purple, purple crystal and a white crystal or whatever whatever your field might be so this is all user definable you can add your own field here but um, the point is that you can you can add a, a bunch of information to help give you context once you're actually in your schematic later this is the duplicate and off-grid uh, parts much like other uh, functions in KiCad you can zoom in and out very easily just using your scroll wheel and a mouse um, but if you happen to put a pin over here and you didn't see it, you can actually do a check and it'll show there are no off-grid or duplicate pins. So that's kind of a similar to an electric rules check or a, a DRC. It's good to have just as a, a sanity check against, uh, you know, in case, in case you had two pins underneath one another, that kind of check will actually help with that. Uh, the standard zoom functions. These are buttons for logic parts, which we're not going to talk about right now. The document file, you can actually look at the, uh, the PDF of it. Uh, these fields here are actually for doing multi-page parts, and, or sorry, multi-component parts. And so that, that really starts to be important for larger digital components. Maybe if you have a component with uh, 204 pins on it, uh, you might want to split it up into to different schematic symbols. And this is where you do that kind of thing. And also, uh, this, this allows you to edit, edit the pins on that component as well. Again, this is a very, very simple component. We're just we're just going over these buttons right now. The component itself, uh, much like in the schematic, you have all of the information down here on the bottom. You have your zoom level. You have your uh, absolute reference here. So this is your absolute reference. And then your differential reference of how far you are from a, refer a single reference point. So you can see that we're... Uh, let's see, where's the... Uh, Zero point is right in the middle of the grid, obviously. <laughs> and uh, and then your differential is measured from that point. And this is in inches. On the left here, this is the grid. You can turn the turn the grid on and off. You can also edit the grid up in, uh, up in the, the menus, which we'll go over later. And you can change between inches and millimeters. And then you can also change your, 
your uh, cursor here. On the right side, where all of the normal editing functions happen in KiCad, uh, we have the select, select tool. We have the pins tool to add new pins. This is very important. It will get it get its own uh, its own video. Adding text, and then these are all drawing buttons. This is the anchor points. So you can actually change where you want to anchor the part. You see that this is now zero zero on your part. Uh, this is importing, exporting, and deleting. All right, so that's it for the library editor. This is just an overview. In future videos, we'll be going over how you actually start creating your own components, how you duplicate from other components, and some of the, the deeper menus, and how you can actually use those to better uh, implement and, and create your own schematic symbols.